Welcome back everybody. Today we're back with ATC Pro and we're working departure. So we'll be dealing with aircraft leaving our terminal area and climbing into center's airspace as they travel to wherever they may be going. So let's dive right into working departure in the center of the United States around the Kansas City area and we'll talk about what's going on. For anyone new, I am a pilot and a former air traffic controller. As a controller, I worked in the tower and the local radar facility of one of the largest airports in the United States. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We're going to be working both both east and west departure. Those are kind of the two main departure positions for Kansas City. I've got us set up here with uh, some just plain old weather for now. We may we may make the weather worse, uh, just depending on how uh, how tricky this departure is. We're not dealing with anything with satellite. We already worked approach and final. We worked all four of those positions in a prior video. I'll link a playlist with that video and other of my uh, ATC videos in the pinned comment. Once again, I have Madman paperwork laid out in front of me here with the various departure procedures and frequencies and that sort of thing, but the radar scope is going to provide us a little bit of help here. And we've got a little bit of time here where there's going to be quite a few just commercial bits of traffic. I, I don't know for sure if they're all going to be departures or what, so we'll just kind of have to see. Okay, so we are... This is the uh, Kansas City area here. We're going to go range rings uh, at five mile intervals, so between each of these rings is five nautical miles. We're going to bring this in a little bit closer here just so we can see a bit better what we've got going on. I've got my data strips over here once we actually have some. We don't have much right now, literally any. Um, let's see, what else do we need? I need uh, another map. We'll go center sectors. Yeah, that'll be helpful for us. This, you know, this is the Kansas City International Airport right here, and this is the terminal radar area. It goes basically, I think, uh, yeah, it was uh, all the way to the ground, so about a thousand uh, MSL, uh, basically a thousand feet sea level, approximately, and up to fifteen thousand feet uh, sea level. Um, so above that and around us is uh, center, Kansas City center, sector forty over here, and that's their frequency one two five point two five. <laughs> 127.9er, 127.725. Oh goodness, that's a that's a tricky frequency. 125.55 down here for sector 42. So we will just have to see what we can do. Oh, I still got to get my pass down. Hang on. Kansas City Airport is VF operating north flow. Altimeter is 3001. Fully stuffed. Departing runways. One right, one left. Okay, your scope. My scope. Okay. By the way, somebody, <laughs> another, another either current or former controller correctly observed in my prior ATC video <laughs> that one of the least realistic things about this simulator is that report that the, uh, the facility is fully staffed. <laughs> that, that certainly never happened much while I was a controller. You know, we were on minimum staffing. We were, you know, man, you, you're working way too many hours. You're working way too much traffic with not enough people. But that is a story for another day. Something's at 1,300 feet coming off Kansas City International. Runway 1 right over here. 1,500 feet. What is it? Squat code of 6243. It's at 1,800 feet right now. AC. Okay. So we wait for them to check in with us. Kansas City departure. Good morning. AC 4553 is with you 2,300 for 4,000. So they said they were at 2,300 feet climbing to 4,000 feet. And that checks out with what our radar scope showed us there. So that's good for us. AC 4553 Kansas City departure. Radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000. Up to 6,000 AC 4553. So we... Let's see, where are they going? They're going Lakes 8 Twain. So that departure procedure has them going like over here. We will we will turn them on that route uh, shortly. AC 4553, proceed direct Twain. Direct Twain is 4553. So they're on a standard, a uh, standard departure procedure, like a published departure procedure. Oh, we got another departure here. Southwest 690 going- Kansas City departure Southwest 690 is with you 1,900 for 4,000. 1,900, okay. Southwest 690, Kansas City departure radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000. Proceed direct Columbus. Up to 6,000 to you want trails for Southwest 690. 
Southwest 690, proceed direct Columbus. Did you want one po for Southwest 690? All right, you can do whatever you want. Southwest 690, turn right, heading 090. Zero, nine, or zero. Heading 090, zero, zero, Southwest 690. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get him to proceed direct to that fix so that he can just resume the transition. Um, basically, when I would control, I would give these aircraft vectors, like, you know, AC. I think Twain, Twain might be one of these two, or the point is, you know, Twain is, Twain is out here somewhere. It's basically, they're already going direct there. Um... But I would give them a heading of, you know, AC 4553, turn right heading 100. So they're going down here like this. Resume the Lakes 8 departure Twain transition. And so they would fly like a 100 heading, hit the, uh, the, the intercept angle um, or hit the uh, radial to get out uh, to the, the, the Twain transition and then they would resume it. That does not seem to work in this simulator, which is unfortunate, um, but that's okay. So let's see here. Southwest 690, proceed direct Columbus. Is it Columbus? Oh, maybe. For Southwest 690. It's Columbia. That's, that's what it is. Southwest 690, proceed direct Columbia. Direct Columbia, Southwest 690. Okay, now the reason that I have been kind of slow in their climb is that uh, we've got an arrival right here. Arrival of Southwest 3338 is coming in here, and you will recall that arrival from my, my prior ATC Pro uh, video, Arrival's airspace, this is a different controller, and their airspace goes down to 11,000 right here. So AC 4553, climb and maintain 10,000. 10,000 AC4553. So AC is cleared up to 10. This aircraft is cruising at 11, which is still within their airspace. My airspace ends at 10. And so we've, I mean, there, this, this uh, AC is not going to climb fast enough that that's an issue, but we've always got the separation, at least on paper. Now, Southwest here would love for me to climb them and keep them going. And I would do that in the, in the real world because I could do what's called a point out. I could uh, like slew on this aircraft and like, here, hang on, I'll, I'll try and do one. And uh, Approach controller, let's see here is... What, 1A, let's see here, 1A, you see the little scratch pad stuff I'm doing over here. Point out that one. No, did not take that. Okay, 1A, shift 8, there we go. There we go, hey, it did work this time. Okay, so we are now pointing out this Southwest aircraft to the uh, East Arrival Controller. And they have accepted it. It stopped flashing. Southwest 690, climb and maintain 10,000. Climbing to 10,000, Southwest 690. So we pointed this aircraft out to this air traffic controller, and th they acknowledge that, so we can climb this aircraft into their airspace at this point. Ultimately, traffic's not going to be a factor. Um, but, uh, as it's city departure, good morning, Southwest okay. 2417 is with you out at 1,900 for 4,000. Southwest 2417, Kansas City departure, radar contact, climb and maintain 6,000, turn left, heading 270. Up to 6,000, heading 270, Southwest 2417. Okay, so let's see here. 1A was the point out for east, and let's see here. 1B, whoops, I need the multifunction. I need like a splat to show up over here. Hang on, 1B. Splat. No, it's not going to work. Yep. Okay. Well, sometimes I, I do struggle with the, uh, the the keyboard commands on here quite a bit. AC 4553, climb and maintain 15,000. Airspace deviation on AC 4553. You cannot climb your airspace. The, what, what that thing was just complaining to me about is that AC is still within this like arrival corridor for approach. Um, I, I should have pointed him out before I climbed him like that. Southwest 690, climb and maintain 15,000. Up to 15,000, Southwest 690. I don't know. Getting these keyboard commands to work on this is, is really quite a pain, to be honest with you. Um, and a couple other people have mentioned, and I, what I just did there is I hit C and then clicked on both of these to hand them off to center. Lear 309, Whiskey Romeo, Kansas City departure, radar contact, climb and maintain 6,000. 
Proceed direct Twain. Client maintains 6,000 direct Twain. We're nine with the Romeo. Good, good. Uh, okay, so AC Center has Kansas accepted them. Southwest 1975 is with you. 1,900 for 4,000. Southwest 1975, Kansas City departure. Radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000. Turn left heading 270. Kansas South departure. Southwest 1975. 4,000. Southwest 2720, Kansas City departure. Radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000. Proceed direct Columbia. Climbing to 6,000 direct Columbia, Southwest 2720. AC 4553, contact Kansas City Center on 125.25. Kansas City Center on 125.25, AC 4553. Southwest 690, contact Kansas City Center on 125.25. Kansas City Center on 125.25, good day, Southwest 690. Okay, so that's Southwest. We were never able to get the point out done, and I really, I really just hate the, like, supervisor thing they have that just kind of yells at you all the time, so hang on. Southwest 2417, climb and maintain 15,000, proceed direct CATS. Airspace deviation on Southwest 2417, you cannot climb in outside your airspace. I mean, we're, we're so clear of that particular bit of airspace that's up at 11,000 right there that they're... The, the little the little coaching thing that gets angry at you is just ridiculous. That's okay though. Southwest 1975, proceed direct cats. Direct cats Southwest 1975. Okay, so they're going down direct Columbia here. We've got this Lear that's going to be climbing for the better part of forever, um, but that's okay. Let's see here. Lear Niner Whiskey Romeo, climb and maintain one zero thousand. Climbing to one zero thousand Lear Nine of Whiskey Romeo. They've got a brickyard arrival coming in right here, but once again, they're going to stay up at eleven thousand, so it's going to be just fine for us. Um, okay, that Southwest is still doing some good things. We'll work on handing them off to center. This one, we've still got capped at six thousand feet, which the uh, departures hate. They want to get climbed as much as they can, uh, so they can get above ten thousand feet and increase their speed over two hundred and fifty knots. So here we're gonna we're gonna try we're gonna try a point out again. One A, multifunction shenanigans, that right there. Okay, good. There we go. Okay, point out to one A. It took that for some reason. I don't know why it wasn't working on the west. They accepted the point out. Well, once it stops flashing, I think they accept it. I forget the details. Yep, there we go. Southwest twenty seven twenty. Climb and maintain one five thousand. Climb and maintain one five thousand. Southwest twenty seven twenty. There we go. Okay, so let's see here. And I'm probably going to have to point this one out too. Let's see here. 1A is East Feeder. There we go. I mean, once once you get the point outs to start working, it can help you quite a bit. Now, interestingly, it looks like maybe, maybe they've only got one departure. Let's see here. Southwest 2417, contact Kansas City Center on 127.725. Forgot to hand off Southwest 2417. The it just yelled at me um, because I, I had forgotten to hand it off. But once that thing changed to C, uh, I, I thought that they had done it. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, they got a thousand feet separation there. That's all good, fine and dandy. Um, no one is ex is accepting that point out, so I'm I'm thinking that well anyway. Southwest 1975, climb and maintain one five thousand. Climbing to one five thousand, Southwest 1975. And now I will work on. There we go. I hit C and then I clicked on it, and it's now being handed off to center. I will do the same with that one, and that one right there. Lear Niner Whiskey Romeo. Climb and maintain. How high do you want to go? Lear Niner, Whiskey Romeo, climb and maintain 15,000. Kansas City departure, good morning. Flagship 3744 is with you out of 2,400 for 4,000. Can you repeat that? Lear Niner, Whiskey Romeo, up to 15,000. Yep, yep, you got it. Lear Niner, Whiskey Romeo, climb and maintain 15,000. Climbing to 15,000, Lear Niner, Whiskey Romeo. Flagship 3744, Kansas City departure, radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000, proceed direct Twain. 6,000 direct Twain flagship 3744. Lear Niner Whiskey Romeo, contact Kansas City Center on 125.25. 125.25, Kansas City Center on 125.25. Climbing to 125.25, Lear Niner Whiskey Romeo, up to 125.25. Climbing to 125.25, Kansas City Center on 125.25. Climbing to 125.25,
125.25. Good day, man. I'm down. doing that based on these sector frequencies. I think I, I must have handed this one to the wrong center sector before. Maybe I gave him the wrong frequency. Southwest 1975 contact Kansas City Center on 127.9er. Kansas City Center on 127.9er, Southwest 1975. There. Okay, those are both gone. Southwest 2720 contact Kansas City Center on uh, 125.25. Two thousand one hundred for four thousand. Two thousand one hundred, huh? Southwest, where are you going? Southwest twenty seven correction. Southwest twenty eight seventy nine, Kansas City departure radar contact. Climb and maintain six thousand, turn left heading two four zero. Can you repeat that for Southwest twenty eight seventy nine or climbing to six thousand heading two four zero? <laughs> so so you guys got it anyway. Southwest twenty eight seventy nine, proceed direct cats. I never liked to just give the give them direct. I, I always wanted to know what the heading was. The headings become important when it uh, when you've got a lot of traffic that's very close to each other, and sometimes you have to rely on what's known as divergence uh, to ensure that you have uh, appropriate separation with your traffic. Um, and you can't do that if you don't know what heading the aircraft is flying. There we go. Okay, point out. Flagship 3744, climb and maintain 10,000. 10,000, flagship 3744. Brickyard arrival, we got a Southwest arrival, we got an American arrival, boo. Kansas City, departure, good morning, AC 5790 is with you, climbing out of 1,900 for 4,000. AC's going via the Butler departure, that's like straight south here. AC 57... 90, Kansas City departure, radar contact, climb and maintain 6,000, turn right, heading 090. 6,000, heading 090, AC 5790. I'm going to initiate a point out with this aircraft immediately so that I can turn him and climb him behind this brickyard, but get him going on his, on his way as fast as we can. You know, one of the goals with air traffic control is to ensure the safe and expeditious uh, flow of air traffic. So, you know, the sooner I can get AC headed in the right direction for this, you know, maybe, maybe they're going down to Dallas or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't, it doesn't say from my information here, but, uh, that's okay. Um, you know, that, that's helpful to the pilots. It's helpful to the passengers. It's helpful to me as a controller to get them the heck out of my way. AC 5790, proceed direct Butler, climb and maintain 15,000. Direct Blair up to 15,000, AC 5790. Sounded like he said direct Blair, but B-U-M, I think is Butler. Well, as long as he turns south, we're going to be just fine. Uh, flagship at this point is cleared up to 10,000, which is good with another arrival right there. Southwest is doing some Southwesty type things. That's good. And since we were never able to get the point out, I don't, I don't want to climb this aircraft, or I'm going to lose points uh, from from their little <laughs> their little thing. So they're going to wait. They're just going to cruise along here at six thousand feet. You know, being angry at air traffic generally, but not not due to me. Thank you. So that's okay. This right here, having a departure climb through your arrival corridor is really some of the most dangerous time in air traffic. You know, we, I mean, you've got a brickyard arrival right there and then this thing, I don't even know what that call sign is. We'll just call it Envy. Um, so you don't have a whole lot of aircraft, uh, you know, coming in. So we had a gap here where AC is already going to be above that brickyard. I mean, they're at the same altitude right now for all intents and purposes. Um, but, you know, there's 15 miles between them. Um, but still, you know, we are, we are climbing a departure through the middle of a rival's airspace. And that's what the point of the, the, uh, the point out is. Southwest 2879, climb and maintain 15,000. Climb and maintain 15,000, Southwest 2879. Handing them off to center, good. Flagship 3744, climb and maintain 15,000. 15,000, flagship 3744. Didn't want to forget about them as I get busy with this one here. And that Southwest is ready to go. Southwest 2879, contact Kansas City Center on 127.9er. Kansas City departure, flagship 3765 is with you, 2200 for 4000. 
See, we shipped them to center at 7,000 feet in our within our airspace. Flagship 3744, contact Kansas City Center on 125.25. Kansas City Center on 125.25, flagship 3744. See ya. Um, let's see. We've got, uh, okay, they're at 32,000 feet. Absolute no factor. Boom. Flagship 3765, Kansas City departure. Radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000. Proceed direct St. Joseph. 6,000 direct St. Joseph flagship 3765. I think that's this little airport right up here. Anyway, he's going to be he's going to be going north, basically, so it, it won't be a problem for us at all. Now, AC Center has accepted AC. We should be able to ship him here pretty quick. We're going to hold on to him just a little bit. I mean, that's still the arrival corridor. That's still Arrivals airspace where this aircraft is. So we're going to wait until they break through the top of Arrivals airspace before we ship them to center. Just to make sure that someone here at Kansas City, someone with some accountability for this airspace, is still talking to that aircraft. <laughs> Always a good habit to have. Flagship 3765, climb and maintain 15,000. Up to 15,000 flagship 3765. There we go. AC 5790, contact Kansas City Center on 125.55. 125.55, AC 5790. Excellent. And we'll see if we get anything else while flagship is going here, but what we might do... Uh, you know, to be honest with you, departure departure is a lot of fun, um, particularly at busier facilities. But, you know, I mean, even even right here, we were able to just you know, AC just fit pretty well into the traffic flow here. I mean, all of the flow of traffic and these arrival corridors and whatnot, that is all very intentionally designed to help with that safe and expeditious flow of air traffic. Uh, and so when things really get interesting is when you have some bad weather. Um, we might, we'll, we'll see if we get another departure here in, in a couple minutes, but we might end up uh, kind of backing out of this and doing departure with some bad weather. Yep. Yep. Center accepted flagship. We don't have any other aircraft, so we'll get rid of them. Flagship 3765, contact Kansas City Center on 127.9er. Kansas City Center on 127.9, a good day flagship 3765. Good day, good sir. Um, let's do some weather. Let's get, uh, somebody mentioned here, you know, because this, this app has been largely, um, abandoned by its developers, which is true. And by the way, if you do manage to track this thing down, like there's, I don't provide a link to it in the description because honestly, like the way that you have to buy it and set it up feels like a scam. <laughs> I, I don't feel good about having done it. Um, so uh, I don't recommend that you do, to be frank. Um, but if this would have been on Steam or if somebody could like get the licenses just for how this works uh, and, you know, maybe even replace like the voice lines or something like that, man, th this if this was on Steam, th this thing would this thing would sell a half million copies. No problem. OK, we're going to go user generated weather. We're going to go we're going to go we're going to go with some uh, some heavy precipitation. We're going to have a wind from the north at 20, 20 knots is fine. By the way, winds are named from which they came. So like a zero one two wind, or we'll just go, we'll go zero one zero, whatever we can do here. It's kind of finicky. Uh, zero zero niner wind. That is a wind that is from the north, uh, basically the north. So it's windy. Um, it's not winter or anything like that. That's okay. So then generate weather. Uh, but the point was, um, this used to have real world weather that you could like load. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of that has kind of gone away. Um, that's probably a little bit too much for people to actually be flying into. Oh, that's, that's way too little. Come on now. I need a, I need a happy medium. I need a happy me. Oh gosh! All right, Se severe storms. <laughs> that's that's not what we want. Um, but then we'll we'll try and work with some of these departures to vector them around the bad weather. Um, okay, and we need to we need to pick a different a different time. We gotta pause this. We get this set back up here. Range rings at five. Range of the scope overall thirty six works well for me. We're going to go maps. I want center sectors to help me with those frequencies. I certainly don't have any of that stuff memorized. And then we're going to turn on our weather. Oh, man. Now, airplanes fly through rain 
quite a bit. They don't fly through things like turbulence uh, very often, and they certainly don't want to fly through like level five or six, um, like precipitation density. What what these weather radars are able to measure is the density of the air droplets in the uh, in the air. So you know we know that yes, there are there's probably some rain. There's certainly some thick clouds over here. Um, but like the stormy stuff or the real bumpy stuff, um, I thought this stuff was in color and maybe maybe there's a way that I can do it in color and I just don't remember. I don't remember. Well, anyway, we'll figure it out. Okay, looks like we got somebody happening. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, so if we had like somebody going out on the Chief 5 cats, they'd probably need like a vector to get through here before you sent them direct cats. We'll get, we'll get our briefing. Kansas City Airport is module VF running north flow. Altimeter is two nine nine zero. Fully stuffed. Departing runways one Kansas right, City one left. Climbing south west sixteen hundred to one five thousand. Climbing with the forty two ten to four thousand. Okay, your scope. <laughs> Precared forty two ten checked in, and that guy told me that you know you, you got him. He's all yours. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> okay, let's see how we. What, what was the point out again? One a multifunction that one. Uh, Brickyard 4210, Kansas City Departure Radar Contact. Climb and maintain 6,000, proceed direct St. Joseph. Climbing to 6,000, direct St. Joseph, Brickyard 4210. Now we should see some of this weather move periodically. Um, at least I would think that we will. I guess I don't know. We will have to see. Okay, good. Yeah, Brickyard 4210's doing fine. Southwest, the point out was accepted. Southwest, 1600. Climb and maintain 10,000. Why, why are they taking Southwest over there? The DeSoa transition is way south. Southwest, 1600. Fly heading 190. 190, Southwest, 1600. Man, okay. This, this actually ended up being messier than I had hoped that it would be. Um... Yeah, we can precede them direct to Soa maybe, but that that aircraft is still going to be catching them. Oh, no. Company traffic's going to run you down southwest. Here at 9, southwest 1600. Light chop, huh? You got some you got some bumps? Well, you tell company traffic about it. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. The weather radar just updated a little bit. So even with the the real or the live radar having been abandoned uh, in this particular game, you can still kind of get radar to work, you know. Brickyard 4210, climb and maintain 15,000. Climbing to 15,000, Brickyard 4210. Okay, handing off to center. Oh, gosh, what was Southwest cleared up to? Cleared all the way up to 1,500. Man, all right. Southwest 1,600, proceed direct to DeSoa. Direct Info, Southwest 1,600. So what I would generally say there, though, is something like Southwest 1600, proceed direct to SOA, resume the Racer 3, uh, Racer 5 to SOA transition, something like that. Okay, and Center has accepted that aircraft, and they're going to be departing out the south right down here, I think. They're, I mean, they're already in this center sector. Oh boy, but I wonder, I wonder which center sector it went to. Because I think ultimately it's going to be Sector 48 they end up talking to going out to SOA. But they're in, <laughs> if I switched them right now, they'd be t probably talking to Sector 40. And they are, they're going to be traversing Sector 42. Oh, well, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do there. Brickyard 4210, contact Kansas City Center on 127.9er. Kansas City Center on 127.9er, good day, Brickyard 4210. Southwest 1600, contact Kansas City Center on 125.55. Kansas City Center on 125.55, Southwest 1600. I guessed right. If, I, if it would have handed off to like Sector 48 or something, uh, I would have. it would have scolded me for having used the wrong one right there. So, And I do have the ability to try to hand these off directly to the sectors, but right now I'm just hitting C to hand it off to Center and then letting letting the game figure it out. See, because like Southwest 1600, those pilots are not going to fly right through that stuff. They're probably going to get a little bit of a deviation and then, uh, you know, kind of go around it. At least in real life, that's what they would do. I don't know if the game has any of that built in. <laughs> Kansas City departure water ski 5027 is with you climbing out of 1,900 for 4,000. <laughs> I have no idea what that call sign was. Hang on. 
<laughs> we gotta pause that one. L- Lodisky? Lodisky? Something like that? Hang on. Lof. L-O-F. Um, oh, water ski. Okay. Would not have guessed that one. Water ski 5027 Kansas City departure radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000 turn right heading 090. 6,000 turn right heading 090. Water ski 5027. Water ski. Yeah. All right. We will point them out to the approach controller here. Hopefully be able to basically send them direct butler or at least have an idea of what that heading looks like. And then evaluate if they need vectors. Water ski 5027, proceed direct butler. Climb and maintain 15,000. Did you want both for water ski 5027? Up to 15,000. Water ski 5027, proceed direct butler. Did you want to go for water ski 5027? Cannot understand what he's saying, so let's see here. What was it he was asking? Zugor? No, I, di- I didn't want. I didn't want Zugar. Butler. It's 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 just Butler. Water ski fifty twenty seven turn right heading one eight zero. Right to one eight zero. Water ski fifty twenty seven. Hmm. All right, Zugor. It was <laughs> it's confusing with Zugor. I don't even know. I don't even know what to do about that. Tell you what, they would probably want to do is, depending on where they're going. I think the butler transition basically goes like straight down here. They'd either try and go through there or they would go around it you know, over this way. So let's see here. Water ski 5027, turn left heading 120. Turn left heading 120, water ski 5027. Yeah, that'll get them pretty close to heading through there. And they should be climbing pretty aggressively here. And water ski 5027, fly heading 140. Contact Kansas City Center on 125.55. Turn heading 000, Kansas City Center on 125.55. Good day, water ski 5027. Absolutely not. What, why are you going north? Don't fly north. Water ski 5027. Good afternoon, American 970 is with you. Climbing out to 2000 for 4000. <laughs> water ski 5027, fly heading 140. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I gave him a 140. It would have sent him right through there. And, oh, man, what a what a mess. American 970, Kansas City departure radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000. Turn left, heading 240. Up to 6,000, turn left, heading 240, American 970. Probably called him the wrong thing a few too many times, but that's okay. All right, we'll try and point this aircraft out to this controller over here. Yeah, they, they went straight north. I mean, so they were Racer 3 departure. No, what, what is it? Racer. Yeah, you know, whatever, whatever they were. Racer 5 and then Butler transition, which is down here. But they took that. <laughs> they, they took that heading of a 000 instead of 140. I probably could have almost preceded them direct to Butler right there anyway. Well, you know what? You're not you're not my fault anymore. You're not you're not my problem. <laughs> Center wants to route you up light there. Bumps here are 5, for American 970. You got some light bumps while you're in the uh in the, the storm there. Great. These things happen. I get it. I get it. Somebody else right behind you. That's good to know. Uh Saint Joseph. Southwest Airlines. Kansas City departure. Good afternoon. Southwest 263 is with you out of 2,000 for 4,000. Out of 2,000. Once again, I'm looking to make sure that the altitude they say is within 300 feet of what I'm reading. Southwest 263, Kansas City departure. Radar contact. Climb and maintain 15,000. Proceed direct St. Joseph. Up to 15,000. Direct St. Joseph. Southwest 263. All right. Well. Since this point out doesn't seem to be working for some reason, well, I mean, what do I need to do? Like maybe. West feeder, 1B, multifunction, try it again. Southwest 263 should, I mean, they'll be going direct St. Joseph, so they'll they'll be climbing as fast as they can away from us here. So we can just already start pinging them to center. Oh, oh, good, okay. 
so the, the point out was successful that time. That's good. American 970, proceed direct to SOA, climb and maintain 15,000. Direct to SOA, 15,000 American 970. Okay, kind of cruising through the, uh, cruising through a little bit of rain there. These things happen. You really do, like, honestly, um, particularly for people who are just, it, it sounds, it sounds stupid to say, but the only people who are successful air traffic controllers are people for whom air traffic control is easy. So, you know, particularly for the people who already thought air traffic control was easy, uh, like a stormy day or like bad weather or like a runway change in the middle of a shift or something like that, that it's, it's fun. Um, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you busy. Flagship 3738, Kansas City departure. Radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000. Proceed direct Twain. Climbing to 6,000. Direct Twain. Flagship 3738. Point out. And as soon as that point out is acknowledged, we'll climb them even more. Americans going places. Good. Flagship point out was accepted. Flagship 3738. Climb and maintain 15,000. Climbing to 15,000. Flagship 3738. Look at that. They're three miles off the end of the runway, already cleared up to 15,000 feet, you know, leaving, leaving our airspace. That's, that's how we do things. Uh, American, uh, 9,300 feet. Good. American 970, contact Kansas City Center on 127.725. Forgot to hand off American 970. They must have gotten handed off to 127.9er, because they definitely did get handed off. I just must have given them the wrong frequency. So if you give them the wrong frequency, you know, I, I handed them to sector 48. I'm sorry, 46, it seems, instead of 48. So that was my fault. That's all right, though. Southwest 263, contact Kansas City Center on 127.9er. 127.9er, Southwest 263. Sure would love to know what water ski's doing up there. Living his best life. Just hanging out. Yeah, and if you're working... Uh, but like I was saying, you know, the bad weather days are, are some of the most fun days. Uh, first of all, a, a thunderstorm and like a lightning storm from inside an air traffic control tower is is amazing. It's it's deafening. You know, the, the air traffic control, the tower, kind of the glass or plexi or whatever it is, is not particularly well insulated. It's frequently either very cold or tremendously hot in the tower. Um, but man, you feel the boom of thunder and uh, the flash of lightning. You know, if you're if you're fortunate enough to get like lightning strikes on your runway or on the buildings around you, it is absolutely gorgeous. And by the way, if you've never thought about it, you know, being up in an air traffic control tower, some of my favorite days to work were uh, the 4th of July here in the United States, our Independence Day, uh, because there are fireworks. You know, I was at a very big facility, very near a very large city, and uh, there were fireworks all around us as far as you could see, and they were going off at our eye level uh, because of the tower we were in. So it was it was gorgeous. It was absolutely gorgeous. One of these days when I do a uh, tower 3d pro again i'm i'm definitely gonna do <laughs> like a runway change uh in the middle uh so that instead of departing to the north we're gonna switch and depart to the south or something like that that'll that'll be a lot of fun just kind of keep things you know uh, keep, keep things fresh <laughs> flagship would keep climbing here that oh it's a crj 200 yeah, I mean, because you should be at like 12,000 by now, but you're flying a CRJ-200 that, you know, you're just fortunate to still be in the air, frankly. I mean, I get it, um, but CRJs, particularly the 200 model of the CRJ, uh, you never looked forward to seeing those as an air traffic controller. That's okay. And, uh, you know, just, just tough it out, flagship. It is what it is. Oh, here's another departure for us. And then I think we've only got one more after that, this American uh, 1870, or maybe this is the American. I'm not sure. Ooh, there we go. See, they need to go west over here. Southwest 1664, Kansas City departure, radar contact. Climb and maintain 6,000, turn left, heading 300. Climbing to 6,000, left to 300, Southwest 1664. We're going to try and, whoop, what happened? 1B, multifunction, bam. There we go. All right. 
pointing out, we're going to try and get them right through there. And the pilots would all have, uh, particularly of these commercial airliners, would have like weather radar. And they would say, yeah, we think we can make that gap. Or, you know, no, maybe maybe just take us up north around it. And, uh, okay, no problem. Happy. What, whatever you guys need, just let us know. We'll make it happen. Uh, but it really does, I mean, it, it comes down to what the pilots want, um, you know. I need my approach controller to start paying attention, please. Flagship 3738, contact Kansas City Center on 125.25. Kansas City Center on 125.25, Sierra Flagship 3738. See ya. Southwest 1664, turn left, heading 250. 250, Southwest 1664. We're going to shoot him right through that gap. I mean, at this point, I might be able to give him, like, direct cats, but I'm not sure exactly where that fix is over there, so I'm going to maintain positive control. Rather than relying on the pilot not to do something, you know, homicidal. Let's see if we can get southwest through there. Okay. Southwest 1664, climb and maintain 15,000. Climb and maintain 15,000, southwest 1664. They finally took the point out. So I'm thinking that they just, the, they, the approach controller won't accept the point out until you're within a certain distance of their airspace. Uh, in the real world, if you had aircraft that were going to be conflicting or possibly traversing each other's airspace, you would be pointing them out as early as possible. Um, also, by the way, I, I, got, I, I do read a lot of the comments. Someone had mentioned that they'd like me to change my cursor so that it was a mouse so it would be easier to see in the recordings. Um, I, I can't. Like, this is the what the trackball mouse functionality looks like on a star's radar screen. Uh, and so it should kind of look like a little white cross to you. I did notice in my recording software last time uh, that sometimes it looked like a black cross, which was very challenging to see, make no mistake. So at this point, I would be talking with this pilot. This pilot would be saying like, yeah, no problem. We'll have no problem getting between those cells. Or they'd say, oh, you know what? It kind of looks like it's closing. Why don't, why don't you just take us up here behind that other cell, you know, which is moving. They're all moving to the south here anyway. Um... And, you know, no pilot wants to be the pilot who... who Southwest 1664 getting a bit of light chop at 8,800. A bit of light chop, huh? Well, it's going to get a lot worse. Buckle up. Um, and so, but uh, you, don't, you don't ever want to be the, you know, you, you flew into the storm thinking you could make it through the gap. And there are, there's a lot of training. There's a lot of standards and company processes and procedures that go into what a pilot might try and do um, with, you know, with the aircraft while they're flying here. See, because it's been a while since our radar has updated. I mean, this storm cell might be like right here now. And, you know, that could change things for poor Southwest here. Um, but, the, you know, these storm cells, uh, you know, I encourage you to learn about weather if you haven't before. Uh, I unfortunately have gotten very, very close to a, a tornado in my life um, simply because I didn't know that it was there. Uh, you can't see them coming. Um, I wasn't listening to local ra radio, so I didn't I didn't know that like the alarm sirens were going off. I was in a car and I just thought I was kind of driving through a thunderstorm. I mean, tornadic activity was not forecasted. Uh, and so I, uh, I got, I got way too close to a tornado while I was in a car at one point. But the point is, um, these cloud tops, this Southwest is not going to go over these storms, um, uh, particularly in the terminal environment. They, they really only have a choice of kind of going either through or around them. Perhaps, uh, in a, in a center environment, they may be able to get up and over them. Um, but that would be, that would be pretty tricky and would be very demanding on the aircraft. Um, and the aircraft may not even be able to get high enough to go over them. Some of the tops on these thunderstorms are, are just far too high to fly over. Ooh, there we go. It updated. We kept it. We, we, we split the middle. Look at that. By golly. Southwest 1664, contact Kansas City Center on 127.9er. Kansas City Center on 127.9er. Good day, Southwest 1664. Good day, Southwest 1664. Excellent. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and leave this one here. This was a lot of fun. You know, uh, departure... Uh, d departure is a, a very important position for any radar facility, undoubtedly, and it is uh, often the position where people start to learn, uh, like the the radar um, at a uh, at a facility. At least in my experience, maybe maybe other facilities are different these days. My my experience was a while ago. Um, but you end up dealing with um, just a few turns of an aircraft, or just a just a little bit of control that's actually required. I'm just going to go ahead and pause this before this next aircraft pops up. 
because I will feel compelled to get them out of my airspace. Uh, as opposed to something like approach where you're descending and slowing them down and you know the airspace is all a lot more complicated and that sort of thing. You know if, if you can if you can learn how to do point outs and you can kind of learn you know how to do the the keyboard functionality you can work departure you know just don't don't let the dots touch basically and uh, you know there's a lot of things that i'm not doing in here like visual separation and that sort of thing that are pretty relevant i hope that you're enjoying my uh my exploration of atc pro i'll definitely be doing some things at other airports particularly atlanta at some point but it really is it, it's such a learning curve to get familiar even with these departure procedures so that when i see chief five cats i know that that aircraft wants to go west <laughs> you know that's that's uh that's a, a fairly significant learning curve for every airport in this game and in the real world for every air traffic controller most air traffic controllers in their career only work at one two or maybe three facilities uh, actually working traffic they may be doing administrative things at other at other facilities but um, the airspace is all different depending on the amount of traffic that you work you know it, it could be something fairly complicated Either way, do be sure to check out the playlist in the pinned comment for additional ATC videos of mine. Now, believe it or not, the channel just had its second anniversary. I'd planned to do an AMA or year in review video, but was a little under the weather. So let's see here. WTF is the A-10 walrus. Do you mean the warthog? I've never heard walrus before. <laughs> Jeff, I mean walrus. With a little help from the Rug, I personally put the A-10 through carrier testing. That thing needs a naval variant. What the dog doing? Basically, no matter when you watch this, the blue healer is probably sleeping. It's tough to say where the German Shepherd is at any particular time, but he's either helping ensure national security or on the run from the police. Tough to say. And by the way, yes, the blue healer and the German Shepherd are our real dogs. Thoughts on Australia? Initial gut reaction? Terrifying. I'm not scared of spiders or snakes or anything like that. I can confidently say that every spider I have encountered in the continental United States was no problem for me. But I can't say that for sure about the Huntsman. Do I play Minecraft? No, I never have. I've also never played Roblox. I'm certainly not opposed to Minecraft. My bigger concern would probably be that I would get addicted to it. How much Bert do you Bert? The only correct answer is yes. Okay, thanks for hanging in everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.